decoy is now waiting for him in the park. So are Dateline's cameras. And we're about to find out that Sierra's has a violent past. Do you want to tell us anything about what you were doing in this chat? with someone who identified themselves as a 13-year-old girl. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grimm. This predator led Chris Hansen and his team on a wild goose chase. And not only that, this was his third time being caught by the investigation. Absolutely insane. Make sure you watch this one until the very end because you're not going to believe just how unique this is. I'm pretty sure most of you who have seen this show might not have ever seen this episode. So before we get into it, if you enjoy this video at any point, make sure you drop a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Anyways, let's get right on into it, shall we? But there's another potential potential predator who has a history with justice. He doesn't want to come to our house either, so our decoy is now waiting for him in the park. That's right. In today's episode, we're not even seeing a traditional type episode where Chris, you know, comes out into the kitchen or living room or whatever it might be. Usually it's inside a house at least and he grills these guys. Instead, this is such a high profile case for them, mainly because they've interacted with this guy before and they can just see how dangerous he is, I'm assuming, from the text logs. But yeah, turns out he's going to be meeting them in the middle of a park. So I'm hoping that we see some actual chase action happening here because usually that doesn't happen too much. These guys don't really ever bolt after they leave the house. They usually just submit and maybe you know 10 cops coming out of the bushes with ghillie suits on and tasers in their hands might be the reason for that later during dateline's investigation in petaluma california sierras began another really explicit chat and uh he wanted to come but he was afraid it was a setup but afterwards he was remorseful that he didn't and that's the guy, one of the head dudes at P Justice, which is, you know, not the full name, but the company that works with Chris on these investigations. And he's mentioning that they met him one time before they even worked with Chris and NBC because they've been doing this for a long time and they weren't able to press any charges, sadly. And then the second time they got him to pretty much commit to coming to the house. And then right at the very last second, he maybe realized something was up and backed out. But now this is the third time one of their decoys has struck up a conversation with this guy. And needless to say, this is something Something he's doing regularly if he's been caught by the same company doing this three times dude so i'm glad they're catching this guy today because he sounds absolutely dangerous to be honest Ooh, color me intrigued chris i want to know what this guy has in his history because like i said if you're getting caught doing this three times you're a very dangerous person obviously even getting caught one time you're a danger to most people in society but this dude just has a freaking track record because sierra said he didn't want to meet at the house He's now inbound about five to six hours from his house to come all the way here and then take her back up there to where her mother lives. Okay, and escalating in craziness here, this guy drove five or six hours away, which I consider anything over a couple hours to be a trek in a car trip for me. So this dude's doing a full day road trip pretty much to get over here. And then his plan is to pick up this decoy and drive them back to his area where he lives because apparently the decoy said their mother lives there too. Absolutely scary though. I mean, that is straight up just terrifying to consider the many things that could or probably would happen as soon as this person got into his car six hours away you might as well just be in an entirely different country unless you live in the u.s where you know that's normal but still that's got to be crossing at least one or two state lines he is really definitely trying to gain the confidence of this child and make her feel special and important in a lot of ways the log isn't the most graphic but it's it's very sickening to read when you realize it's total manipulation of a so you heard this guy saying just why this dude is so dangerous. You know, there's some people on this show, much like I believe the most recent guy I covered, the oops predator. I, I'm not sure if that's the most recent one. I don't remember, but people like him, they're, they're just absolute idiots and they're stupid. And therefore their chats, they're pretty explicit. Whereas this guy is taking it to another level because he is very calculated in the way that he's speaking in the logs. According to this lead investigator, everything he's saying is just trying to subtly manipulate this person who he thinks is real at the time. And those are the people that you need to look out for. You know, that is just straight up twisted that he is committing to talking to this decoy for like a month at this point, trying to warp their brain and make it sound normal that he's going to come drive five hours away and pick them up. And they're going to, I don't know, spend their life together. Who knows? I believe by doing that, he felt that he could also survey the area and see who else was around and what the chances were that this was a law enforcement operation. And this dude, like I said, is freaking calculated. He wants to meet in a park because he won't step foot in a house. He knows what Chris Hansen does. And maybe he thinks that's a safeguard. Like, oh, if I don't step foot into a house, there's no way this could possibly be a setup, right? Like, uh, no, wrong. Chris has other ways of doing this, but apparently the guy looped around the park multiple times, just trying to get a read on the area and look for any suspicious, you know, unattended cop cars or undercover 
undercover looking police cars. Who knows? Clearly he didn't do enough searching because he still fell for this. They would not have shown this episode if the guy just fleed. But that also shows that he may be looking past these things because we've seen many times in this show that these people's delusions and their perversions really drive them to do stupid things. And they overlook very simple little differences like maybe the decoy looks totally different than the picture or they realize the house is very well lit for being in the middle of the night and supposedly empty. You know, these are all things these guys are willing to overlook just to get some action. And in fact, the Long Beach police have the park surrounded, and we're there with our cameras. See, they got this thing on lock. And also they talk about another scary aspect of this. This guy was promising gifts, which is just another way for him to coerce and, you know, warp the mind, like I said, of this decoy, had they actually been a child that he was speaking to. He's like, I promise I'm gonna get you this MP4 player. It's pink, it's really cool. And uh, we can go to Disneyland when I pick you up. Like, no, this guy was not planning on taking her to Disneyland. He's going five hours back to his freaking house where God knows what might happen. And that's it. According to his chat, Sierras is driving an SUV. But suddenly, he drives up in a different vehicle. And dude, every time this continues, every time I press freaking play on this video, it's getting crazier and crazier and the scariness level rises. This guy says he's gonna show up in a van and then there is no van when he gets there. He just pops out of some random car and it's like, hey, are you the one I'm talking to? Of course, he approaches her nervously and looks very sketchy doing so. But like the fact that he even lied about the car that he's in, just to fool police if they were possibly listening in, is terrifying. This man had every step of the way planned out. And it, it really scares me to say this, but I don't know if this is the first time he's ever done this successfully. Hey, I don't know what you're saying, cause that's what I am, so. The conversation is hard to hear, but he's clearly <laughs> suspicious. The decoy's hair looks different from the online photo Sierra saw. And see what I just talk about. This is another case where they didn't even bother to have the decoy look like the pictures. They had different colored hair. I don't know how they could overlook this. It's kind of lazy in my opinion when you have so much writing on this and these people are so dangerous. But you know, that's just the mistake they've made in the past and they made it again. Still, this dude is hoping this is a real situation, but it's looking like he's about to bolt. Honestly, I want that to happen because I'm ready to see some taser action, baby. Let's go. As I walk over to talk to him, he spots me and runs. He's running. The police make their move. So apparently he spots Chris or his camera crew and that obviously sets him off. Dude just starts fully bolting it across the field where the police are in finally undercover clothes and there's no ghillie suit surprisingly. So, uh, you know, the cops are not too extra this time, but they chase him down in their civilian clothes and arrest him. Absolutely freaking beautiful. I'm glad they caught him. It's smart to do this in a giant field where he has nothing to run behind for cover or, you know, has no quick access to his vehicle. And thank God these cops actually could run fast enough to catch this dude. Stop it. All right, all right. Do, do what we tell you, all right? Who are you? We're the police, okay. police. And this is legendary. The dude is getting arrested. First of all, he's confused being tackled by somebody in plain clothes, but you can see his badge flying right in front of your face. You know what you were here to do. It, you, you can add two and two together, buddy. You know they're the police, all right? But he's acting all fake outraged. Like, why are you tackling me? I'm just a man walking through the park. I was asking for, for directions. And then as he's handcuffed and taken away, Chris is trying to do a mobile interview. Frank, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Oh. We're doing a story on guys who try to meet children online for Do you want to tell us anything about what you were doing in this chat? This episode is so unique and legendary so far. Like, I'm loving stuff like this. Obviously, I've reacted to many portions of this show so far. So when something is unique in this way, it just is really exciting for me. And the level of danger with this guy. Oh my gosh, this is just absolutely amazing. With someone who identified themselves as a 13-year-old girl. Sierras says nothing. It is taken away to process it. And also, there is just a beauty in somebody being handcuffed and also trying to hide their face. This dude is just looking down at like a sideways angle, hoping that that is obscuring his image. But no, we know exactly what you look like. Yes, this video might have less pixels than a Minecraft painting, but still, we know that face, all right, buddy? You can't hide from America. And I'm sure people on their CRT TVs watching this back in the day could even see it clearer. So he's screwed. You can't hide your face now, buddy. And Police discover that instead of driving his SUV, Sierras rented this car, perhaps to throw the police off. And now we have an explanation for why he showed up in a different car. Again, another level of danger and planning that went into this, which hopefully will lead to a longer sentence when he does get, you know, in front of a judge for this. He rented a car, dude. That's what they got Young Thug for right now. Man sitting in jail for the same exact thing. You don't rent a car right before you do a crime like this, dude. Just show up in the van or maybe borrow a friend's car. 
was also a lie because he actually came through on the MP4 player. Or maybe that was just to keep them, you know, focused while he's driving five or six hours back to the house. Along, along with the directions, it looks like uh, California Highway Patrol cited him for speeding. And would you look at that? This dude was in such a hurry and had such a long haul to get here. He turned his drive into the Gumball 3000 race or whatever and was trying to just skirt across the country as quick as possible, which landed him a speeding ticket on the way. So he'll be fighting that as well as this massive case. That is just absolute beauty right there. Poetic justice. I hope this dude gets like a thousand different charges, dude. In 1987, he pleaded no contest to a charge of assault and served three months in prison. And he apparently has assault charges from earlier, which is why Chris was saying he has a dangerous past. Yeah, there's enough evidence here that this guy should be locked away and we should throw away the freaking key. But as we always know, that is never what happens. I'm sure he got like one day of uh, a sentence and then he just went back out on the street. What kind of danger do you think would be present for a guy like this taking a girl for a ride that long, on a trip that long? He could do anything and she would be powerless. Yeah, we flat out would not have heard from that person that he took with them had it not been the decoy, all right? That absolutely would have just been a full-on disappearing case, a cold case, whatever it's called. I can't think of the word. But thankfully, we don't have to think about that scenario and that outcome because Chris was there to save the day. What I do want to know, though, is what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Are you loving the TCAP still? And did you enjoy this unique episode? I want to know also if you've seen this before because the original upload by Charles Lee Love, the GOAT, does have a fair bit of views, but I wasn't even suggested this for the longest time and i've been reacting to almost every episode of this that i can find as always make sure you check out my patreon if you want to support the channel in other ways sorry i know that 700k q a video is delayed i should be getting that up tomorrow there were some issues with something i'm announcing in that but those are ironed out so as always i will catch you guys in the next video until next time peace out